Stop! Please! Holy oh, shit. Are we rolling? Yes. Hey, YouTube and st st stuff. Uh, other streamers. I. Damn it. <laughs> We're keeping it in. Today's guest is none other than Pete Lee. Pete Lee is my friend. Why am I so weird? Pete Lee is so funny. Uh, kindest comic ever. I mean, he just came into L.A. He's a New York comic, I believe. I didn't ask him. Don't know much about him. <laughs> <laughs> but he was he just came in L.A. and he was just the nicest dude ever and just murders, just kills, just just a class act comic. He reminds me of like what like how a comic's supposed to be. The guy's just good and like something that would be on uh, the old Carson, you know, but like good. Just and not that they you know, I don't know. Anyways, Pete Lee. Boy, I hope he doesn't get mad at that intro there. Huh? <laughs> funny dude, funny comic, coming in hot right now. Dope as dope. Dude. Dope as dope. Dope as dope. Yeah, I've been that. saying that for a decade now. It's from Pineapple Express. Dope as dope. Dope as dope I ever smoked, bro. It's the dopest dope I ever smoked. It's the perfect stoner line. Dope as dope. Dope as dope, bro. <laughs> um, is there a side to these? I believe the cord goes on the left. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. 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 And you can move, you know, there's dials. I need to get these mic stands for my podcast there's setup. 30 so that, bucks for two? It was, yeah. Or 60 bucks? 30 bucks each. Cause not, I, not bad. I need to, yeah, I need to like get what, like, whole uh, music is that they were, out there. The ratings are through the roof. Yeah. Uh, if you, I prefer the clamp on the table mic with the arm. Yeah, but I don't have a table, so this is what it is. What am I gonna? What am I gonna? Dude, I would rather do this where we sit in Oprah chairs. It's <laughs> cool. these are total like Oprah chairs. I think that these are like actual, like like you know when you're on Ellen or not. I mean, we neither of us have been on Ellen, but she has those cool we chairs. Will, yet, yet, yeah, yet we will be on Ellen <laughs> if she's not canceled. We'll be mean to her. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Come here, you lesbian bitch. Just kidding. Too far. You can't say that stuff. <laughs> Have you seen that clip of Dave Chappelle the night that he got the Mark Twain Award? He's on stage afterwards at the DC Improv because, of course, he gets the Mark Twain Award. Yeah. And that's not enough attention. He's got to do a mic. He's got to do. He's, <laughs> he's got to go up on stage. And he was like, he was like, I had my first show here. Uh, it, it was uh, like 32 years ago. It was me. Uh, somebody, somebody, and some dyke named Ellen DeGeneres. <laughs> that's Fantastic. What, that's what he said in his thing. Like, and, and of course he, you know, he explained. He's, he's like, I don't, I don't personally believe that, but I, you know, he's like, it's just the funniest way to say it. <laughs> it is. It's true. I got mad love for lesbians. I love you. We love you. We love you. We love you. you do your thing, but it's just it has. A, it's a good word. It's just like lesbian. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I just I wish that there was a term to define me like lesbian. Yeah, you know, just like weird. We're both a little lesbian. Yeah, we are. We're like I don't like. I feel like I'm like a sensitive weirdo. <laughs> me too. In every relationship with a woman, I'm just trying to not be so sensitive <laughs> that she's turned off. <laughs> yeah. I have been uh sev I don't t at least two uh, lesbians first dude because I, they're just like. You're good enough. You're <laughs> close. You're close. You're a hybrid. I'll take you. <laughs> You're, I love a hybrid. <laughs> New term. There you go, people. I'm a hybrid. I'm a hybrid. By the way, I got to take this stupid mask off. I did the... Um, and <laughs> you, by the way, I'm like... You do Rogan for the first time. You just yeah. have this bald chin strap. Yeah. Fucking nut sucker right there. Like old school football yeah. chin strap. <laughs> like, I don't... Like, is, isn't that weird when you go to hang out with friends? You're like, all right, we're, we know that we're not going to wear a mask when we hang out. But when I walk up, I feel like I need a mask. Not in this household. Really? Okay. We're by all the right. beach. Yeah. The seaweed kills the COVID. I read it in the journal. <laughs> <laughs> I read it in Wall Street Journal. In the Wall Street Journal. <laughs> <laughs> I get the, the seaweed kills COVID. I swear. <laughs> the Wall Street Could you imagine a world where we like didn't have the internet? 
and like you actually had to like go out to your stoop and get a Wall Street Journal. Yeah, that was us when we were kids. Remember yeah, that? That was the situation. Dial up wasn't in it. Dial dial up didn't count. Okay. Mm -hmm. it took four to eight minutes to load every <laughs> single page possible. Yeah. So you just give up. Maybe email. I, all it was good for, for my childhood was a AIM, AOL Instant Messenger. Yeah, I was on the AIM. God, I, I think my AIM, I can still remember it. For some reason, I was junk, stay hydrated. I don't know why I chose that. <laughs> what do you got, thirsty dicks out there? What's going on? I have no idea. I, <laughs> yeah, it's for all, in hindsight, like for, what? for like a sweet boy like myself, yeah. junk, stay hydrated. <laughs> <laughs> it's the worst title. Junk, stay hydrated. I can't even. I it, the joke writes itself. So. I remember I was drinking a bottle of water at the time, and then I was just kind of. I think I might have been high, and I was like, I was like, stay hydrated, man. And then <laughs> for some reason. <laughs> 10 was, years later you're like what yeah i was like what and then i was like let's remix it and put the word junk in there <laughs> not realizing that it sounded like i want hydration from your junk yeah <laughs> it's a good name man yeah mine was uh conit o'brien my last <laughs> name but the o was a zero because it was bigger you know i and, like that and uh, i loved conan o'brien I always knew I wanted to do stand up before I knew I wanted to do stand up because I, yeah, just, you know, did you always know? I like knew, but I didn't know if that makes any sense. Yeah, I um like my so my grandmother she used to be like like a jazz like lounge singer. And okay, stuff. so you had so it she, in the family. I'm yeah, the first. Yeah, my my whole Mexican side, they're all fucking comedians. Just no one has ever touched a mic. Yeah, are you like like I feel like that in my family as well. Like my older brother Rob is like way funnier than me. My but, sister Nicole is funnier than me. Yeah. I sometimes I'll get stuck on a joke and I call Rob who runs a factory <laughs> and I'll be like, "Dude, here's the joke, here's He's the premise." He's a foreman at Carhartt and he Yeah, just literally and he'll be like, "Oh, well, can't you see it? It's this." And I'm like, "God damn it. How God are you that it. much funnier I've been doing than me?" This for 20 years. <laughs> Yeah, you're a shoe salesman. No. <laughs> yeah, my last, uh, the last Fallon that I did, um, he actually wrote, he wrote like to, in its entirety my whole closing bit, and um, and he was like, man, that was so nice that like to be nice to me, you did that as your closing bit. I was like, no, that's the best bit that I had. No, that, <laughs> you were nice to me by gifting me the yeah. golden goose, dude. Good bits. There's nothing better than um, a new good bit. Yeah. Oh God, yeah. It's like it's the only like, like it's the only thing that will bring a comedian out of like a depression. Yeah, like you can actually be like fully depressed. Like the world is is worthless. Like everyone's dying. The in world COVID. is nigh. Yeah, nigh is a word, right? Nigh. I think it is. Bill Nye, the science guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the world is nigh. The world is nigh. <laughs> He's looking Bill it up Nye right now. The science guy. Remember that show? I oh, I saw. So I follow him on TikTok. Yeah. And he did one of those experience or experiments yesterday, where he just like puts sugar and yeast in a pop bottle, and then he puts a balloon over it. And then it like fills up the balloon. Still cool. Yeah. 36. <laughs> yeah. Still cool. It was 59 seconds of him doing this, you know, second grade experience. And I was like, I'm in for the whole 59, I'm in. Bill. What else, Bill? <laughs> and what about just baking soda and vinegar? You got yourself a volcano. Uh huh. I made one this morning. <laughs> <laughs> What if that was the key to fighting depression is doing like science experiments. kids science yeah. experiments? <laughs> That's it. You're taking Zola. Go build a volcano. <laughs> what are you doing? Paper mache. Get your little hands wet. Get your little lesbian paws wet. I am on Zoloft, and if I could take my Zoloft by making a baking soda volcano, and then I could just like Dr. Pepper foam it and go, and just like that's how I absorb my Zoloft, I would love that. That's not a yeah. dude. I used to inhale some narcotics. <laughs> I was my favorite with Oxycontin. I'd grate it up with a little, the little, there's these hose clamps that cl don't get any ideas, druggies. I'm pointing at the camera, not you, Chris. Yeah. And uh, the hose that clamps, uh, automotive hoses, you, you get the, the little striped wire thing. You just, back in the day, uh, Oxycontins would powder up. Now they're uh, time capsule released. Because the kids kept dying on the government, or what are they called? <laughs> Zoloft. What company owns them? Oh, um, they're getting sued. Is it like Merck or some um, shit? Uh, Merck. 
it's all the same ones that they're they're like oh they they developed a vaccine i'm like oh they also developed all the opiates <laughs> yeah they also killed half of the youth in america or from pfizer opioid or yeah one, one, of, one of them anyways uh they had to stop letting them be bio you know fluff up because i would inhale them and go and it just whoa and then you could sniff them and smoke them shoot them but don't do drugs kids so wait, when you're all right, like I'm such a square. I'm the one that like was in health class. You just class. inhaled Zoloff off a of doctor. I know, I know, I you're know. Not that big of a square. I know, sir. I'm not that big of a square. <laughs> you can I, just take it with water, like my yeah, nana. I smoked marijuana <laughs> last night, you guys, and it I was. Love, I've been. I I started. I think this is the first public time I'm ever going to say this. It was only Patreon, right? I I just tried microdosing, bro. I love mushrooms mushrooms are so great i did them forever though i didn't want it but i was like man this pandemic sucks you know it'll make it better micro dosing yeah you're kind of it's kind of like well like whatever thing was limiting you mentally from doing mushrooms or trying out a new drug in the pan because i'm the same way like i think i tried mushrooms right before the pandemic it was like we were on the e like italy was closing down china was closing down uh for some reason the roots had a big concert in uh in la and i was like fuck it there's a weird disease and i'm going to it yeah and then i microdosed uh i microdosed uh mushrooms and i was like this is the best that was actually the thing that made me go i think i need to be on zoloft because like i had yeah. this rush of serotonin and i was like i could just live this way yeah this is you don't even great. need zoloft you just need microdose i need it's more to, yeah. natural it's organic yeah. less side effects <laughs> <laughs> Joe Rogan tweeted it. I'm in. I've always <laughs> known I wanted to do it. I've listened to so many NPRs, uh, read a few articles of like CEOs, executives. Mm -hmm. I'll take a little microdose to go back to work. And when we say microdose, we mean a very small amount. You don't get high. Although it tickled my fancy. And I'm just like, <laughs> damn, maybe I'll just trip some balls again real quick. Come out like Buddha. Have you tripped? Because I, so I've taken mushrooms like I've taken an amount of mushrooms. By the way, I'm celebrating the label. I'm like this. This is brought to you on by. sale at Ralph. Seven ninety nine, twelve pack. You're welcome. Topo Chico. Topo Chico. <laughs> Topo Chico. Topo Chico. We are so California right now. We're like we're down here <laughs> drinking some Topo Chico. <laughs> Fucking nice, man. Waves. There's a lot of howlies out there, but we're gonna beat that ass. <laughs> we blow them away. What were we talking about? I don't remember. We were talking about mushrooms. Oh, yeah. We talking Did you trip, about... trip, trip? Oh, yeah. I So, like, Did one you... square of this chocolate was, like, microdosing, and then I took three squares, and I was like, ah, oh, I'm, like, I'm going to trip balls. And I was, I was like, I'm finally not afraid to trip, because I don't know if you get like this, but I get afraid with new drugs, you know? Mm -hmm. And, um... And then I was at not, not me, sir. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, bring it on. <laughs> I was such an idiot. I should be dead. I used to be like, okay, you're supposed to take one. I'll take six. First time, I'm like 16. You know what? It didn't matter. And, and then uh, I was a fan of Hunter S. Thompson. Don't watch Fear and Loathing when you're 12 years old. Yeah. <laughs> you get influenced. Wow. You took too much, man. You took too much. Dude, that I'm I'm somebody that like like if I have like double the coffee in a day, I'm like, I'm freaking out, man. Bro, and, I'm feeling good. I had speaking of double I had cold brew concentrate and then I slurped that down way too much, by the way. And then I was like, I'll follow this with some herba mate tea, but hand poured tea. Not not even the cans, like even stronger. Followed by uh, there's some there's some in there still. I go get it. Look at you looking at that like there's some in there. There's some. It's calling me. It's, it's how you stay sober. I you love know. that. Uh. By the way, I, I was like surprised that you could just you know shotgun drugs into your body and be reckless, and that I'm the opposite of that. But like like you're wearing a shirt that says "Don't be a cunt." <laughs> <laughs> this is Mark Hayes merch. You're welcome, Mark. I love Mark, Mark Hayes. Go get a shirt. It's comfortable. <clears throat> it uses the same merch guys as me. Green Coast Customs. I don't know. Green Coast something. <laughs> Green Coast Customs. They make my merch. They make high quality shit, bro. You need merch? That's yeah. a really nice t shirt, by the way. You gotta you gotta pay extra. You gotta get the higher end shit. Yeah. I print on the most expensive hoodie they got, and guess what? I look forward to wearing my own merch. It's comfortable as shit, dude. 
Yeah, you want your merch to be somebody's favorite T-shirt because then they wear it more. Yeah. And they love it. And then they come and they buy another one for their boyfriend or whatever. Exactly. Yeah, yeah all my shit's printed on the expensive shit. I make way less profit, but it's better than those dollar blanks that give you fucking scratches on your nipples and then your nipples are bloody during during warm-up sex warm-up sex what's it called warm-up sex <laughs> do you I actually um it, it's like the football players that ride the bike on the sidelines <laughs> like, you're like babe i need to have some warm-up sex because i want to give you really good sex <laughs> i'm bad at riffing warm-up sex well, I think that was great. That was a great riff. That was a but by accident, you know. <laughs> Every mistake is a gift in comedy. Oh my know? god. There's so many. I have so many. Thank you, God. Yeah. Mistakes. <laughs> Thank you, God. Jesus. Bro, I fuck up all the time. I was trying to say uh let the chips fall as they may. That's a saying, right? I think. Yeah. Yeah. I was trying to say that and I said, let the cookie crumble, baby. <laughs> I just is what came out, and then my girl was like, "What?" <laughs> and I was like, "Yeah, you know, like let let it crumble, <laughs> baby." And she's like, "No, <laughs> no." And she just laughed at me, and she's like, "What were you trying to say?" I was like, "Ah," and it took me like five minutes, like jump to let the chips, let the chips in the dips, no uh, <laughs> fall. And I was like, "Oh fuck, yeah, 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 same shit," <laughs> you know. Let the seven layer dip. <laughs> Why? How it may? Because otherwise. It's eight layers. Let the probably. <laughs> let the sour cream be a little thin because it's always way too much of it. Isn't that funny? Like remember the movie Back to the Future where Biff was like, make like a a tree and and get out of here, and it's supposed to be like make like a tree and, and leave. leave. Yeah. And um, I'm the real and, life Biff. <laughs> yeah. And but everybody, I I I talk that way all the time. Like, like have you ever um been filming something that's going to be like really cut up and edited into like a professional th like not that this isn't that but like mm. no no but <laughs> get, out. <laughs> get, get out this is that this is a, a great pot like your podcast is amazing but you know what i'm talking about like yeah. you're, you're shooting a tv show where they're like letting you riff and then there's somebody in in the studio who's an adult that's like um you just said let the chicks fall where the fillet and did you mean to to say where they <laughs> yeah. let the chips yeah. fall where they may and you're like i said that i have no recollection of that bro I, that's probably why i've never been on set <laughs> like, this cooking monster is gonna tank this show i uh i giggle a lot and i start to growl when i act i get nervous and everything gets real like whoa. <laughs> And it's funny. <laughs> I love that you growl. That's that's such a funny thing. <laughs> I used to growl in acting class. Oh man, it was embarrassing. They like stop it. I was like, I'm not trying to growl. It just is a nervous reflex, reflux. Like you know, in, in um, you know how in acting you're supposed to like think a thought and then say the line. You know, like. Like the like if if the Bro, line was you think I'm okay, I'm trying to just remember the line yeah. <laughs> remember the line <laughs> beautiful day isn't it I can't even remember. you know what I mean what's after that <laughs> Craig's like <laughs> my thought is remember the line <laughs> growl <laughs> <laughs> bubbly I love that you growl that's the, that's one of my favorite things that I've heard in this whole quarantine pandemic I can't bro I tell you what. The outtake reel hits hard though. That's that's what I'm good for. Oh my god! The bloopers, yeah. <laughs> the whole day. <laughs> I'm just imagining like like somebody earnestly says a line to you like like tomorrow, can't wait, and you're like, <laughs> <laughs> line, line. <laughs> I, I know it wasn't grr, but. I just, that's the way that it came out of me. God, I Dude, I used like, you're to hilarious. kill it at acting class. Murder, bro. With, like, I wish I could have sets that strong. Yeah. Just dying, gut vis they, But it wasn't supposed to be that way. So it was, like, you know, bad for business. But it was a, it was a hoot, I tell you. Were you already doing stand up at the time? Oh, yeah. I was uh, maybe four years deep into stand up. Uh, with a couple years of improv. Okay, and yeah. And then I went to acting class to like act, act. And we're trying to do serious scenes and shit. <laughs> and I got this shit eating grin and I'm growling and I'm nervous. <laughs> Bro, 
we used to laugh. They would just all like I, I could. I mean, I swear, I shit you not, I could tell and I could feel the class would get excited. Like, oh, yes, it's Craig's turn. <laughs> What's Craig going to do? It was, just, it, was just, it was a shit show, bro. But like in the best way. I've said this before, but the teacher, I was killing so hard where he said to me, he said, like, you're doing everything wrong, but it's so entertaining. Like, I don't want to change you. That's what he told me. <laughs> He's like, you just bad but like in the in a in a beautiful way you know <laughs> your brain your improv and stand-up brain was like there's an audience and i know how i can connect with them yeah you know like i know i know that feeling i like, couldn't spit the lines up yeah they were told me to get angry and i just like i just never forget like we're in a romantic angry passionate scene and they're like, get angry, Craig. And I just was holding the girl. I was like, you fuck face. And then the <laughs> class <laughs> fucking lost it, bro. Like exploded. You like you fucking somebody fuck fell face. off the chair. And I, then we, like obviously the scene broke. It was done. And I was just like, I can't do this shit, man. They're like, get angry, get passionate. And I was like, yeah, smiling, growling, like you fuck face. <laughs> oh, God. That was so funny. Yeah. It's always like crazy in those acting classes where you like, I think it's especially with the guys, like when they get really angry and emotional, because it's like women can get angry and emotional and it's not scary. Right. But yeah. like in an acting class, uh, I remember I had this acting class and there's this really good actor in there. His name was Rich, but he would do these scenes where you'd be like arguing with the girl and he would like, like almost do like, like a 1950s actor where he, he would fucking shake her and like, and all that kind of stuff. And he was like, so angry and like in the moment it was a beautiful scene and it would have been great on film but then afterwards like you're just sitting next to him in class like you're a fucking maniac, you're a maniac. <laughs> like, that's in you <laughs> looks I like rich is eating lunch alone today <laughs> <laughs> get away from samantha rich you monster <laughs> you're pro yeah all the girls in the class are like rich was amazing but he's problematic like rich is really triggering he's the next patino yeah. A Ferratin in 1981. What? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> By the way, this this Topo Chico it's lime so is good. so good. You've it, had how? I've had like I'm three sips of it. <laughs> I'm a drinker. Yeah. I guzzle everything. I do things to excess. It's very annoying. All I want to be is the guy that's like, I do things to excess. <laughs> like, it's not a good, it's not an easy life. Let me tell you. You and I would be the perfect buddy cop movie because like <laughs> you do things to excess. And, and I'm like, I'm a rule follower, you know, like, like in health class in school where they were, they were like, cocaine is bad and you'll take a downward spiral. I was like, got it. I'm not doing it. I was like, yeah, got it from my uncle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. I, I did do cocaine one time, and I remember uh, it was New Year's Eve like four years ago, and it's the only time that I've ever done it. And uh, But like, I remember thinking, like, what? This is the thing? This, Coke, the hey, Coke's a bad drug. Every way, shape, and form. First of all, cokeheads, you go fuck yourself. It's, it's, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. You're listening. I know you're on. I want to be supportive of Craig's point. Go fuck yourself. This is why coke sucks. For most dudes, your dick don't work. Not all, but a good chunk. That was me. Yeah, <laughs> mine worked. I was blessed, uh, and I don't know why. But uh, all my friends, because no. your dick does everything to excess, <laughs> <laughs> and then it doesn't last long enough. If you get some pure shit and you're lucky, it does. Uh, and also, like, you just talk about your childhood and divorce and why you didn't get into college. Not me, but I'm saying, like, other kids, you know what I mean? And uh, didn't go to college. Didn't even try. <laughs> what if Coke was, like, if it makes you do all that stuff, what if you, like, every therapist that you went to, you're just like, <laughs> and then you did, like, like three life. years yeah. of therapy in one hour? <laughs> yeah, that could work. And then what else? That's uh, and then and then you, the 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 dopamine drains too much and then you're just sad. You're so sad. 
I mean, come on, just do speed. Hello. <laughs> yeah, that I, when, your dick works. <laughs> yeah, when I when I did cocaine, I remember just thinking like, this is just shittier Adderall. Yeah, like Adderall is pure and great. Yeah, Adder- and, you know Adderall. I you know, you know it's just it's amphetamines. Yeah, that's why it's so good. It's speed, everybody. You're it, a fucking government meth head. What domesticated? Method, I don't know, corporate method. What do they call it? Um, I'm making it up. <laughs> I don't, yeah. I'm like, Republican? <laughs> I don't know what that's called. I don't, uh, I don't know. Yeah, domesticated uh, method. Just Yeah, it's kind of like being one of those like booze and pill moms, right? Like you're not a junkie. You just drink Sauvignon Blanc and pop pain pills. But you are a junkie. But you are a junkie. You're a fucking junkie. And it's okay. You know, mm-hmm. no, you need to. You get the good. Get on the top of chica. Yeah, <laughs> I my because it's a dark life. Because it's a dark. That's my view of um like whenever somebody like has substance you know problems or whatever like um I like I had this point and like I'm a very happy guy but like I had a point like years and years and years ago I was going through a divorce and I felt suicidal and that was like the first time that I've ever been like really low. And you need mushrooms. Yeah, and um. And then I remember thinking, like, uh, one of my friends was telling me that he had, like, a really bad drug problem. And I remember thinking, like, well, at least you're still trying, you know? <laughs> like, like, I gave up. Yeah, like, like I I'm literally up. at the point of giving up, and you're still trying to find happiness, like, by any means necessary. So whenever somebody, like, talks to me about that kind of stuff, I'm like, oh, you're trying. Yeah. Like, like you're trying to cope. <laughs> yeah. You're a trier. And I'm not in that place anymore, by the way. Like, don't. Don't DM me being like, there's hope. I'm I'm totally out of that, and I'm good now. Well, now yeah. that you're out of that suicidal depression, yeah. we got to get you a firearm. Oh, I got one of those. <laughs> you do? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes! Yeah. Fucking Snuggle Storm has is packing heat, baby. Yeah. That's amazing. It I so um I can talk about this now that the court uh the court case I have a restraining order against someone who was waking me up. Like like I have a stalker and you know how people uh you know like girls are like oh my god like like i texted this guy and then he like texted me back like (laughs) what a stalker like i like a real stalker like like i would i would wake up uh my girlfriend and i would wake up every single morning which by the way crazy people they get up early like they are (laughs) up way earlier than you because they didn't go to sleep yeah and the way that we would wake up for like a month in a row was him just like banging on our window going i'm gonna fucking kill you and we're like oh we're up and uh you know by literally the 14th time what the fuck yeah literally the holy the 14th time that the cops were at our place for this um the the cops were like so we've been here a lot uh (laughs) do you own a firearm and i was like well i'm quite liberal and i don't i don't think i could ever you know do that and he's like well uh this person is threatening to kill you and this person has a record and the person's very credible and the cop was like like you know that things get serious when next cops... time the guy just walks by you're just like <laughs> yeah. pra, 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 pra. but like you know that I things get in my dog today <laughs> <laughs> the pa, pa, pa. um but like you know that things get serious when cops go like okay so we're done here and then they press that uh body camera button until it blinks three times and then they're like okay so we're all done here and we've covered everything right bleep 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 and then they're like you need to get a gun <laughs> and have we told you about guns Guns. yeah and uh, he's like here take mine yeah and so the serial numbers off so now i'm like yeah now i'm like like a texas man that sleeps with a firearm <laughs> next to my get? bed i i got um uh, i got a springfield xd9 which is a nine millimeter yeah nice uh, gun. yeah i yeah. know that and uh I never thought that I'd be a gun person, but uh, my girlfriend, Jamie, she actually grew up being like a champion shooter. So that's phenomenal. Yeah, we go to the, you know, those, those videos that Rogan posts where yeah. it's like him Tarantino. hitting every single target, yeah. you know, and, and he even like has like the correct hand positioning. Um, my girlfriend does that when we go to the shooting range and it it's awesome and fully emasculating at the same <laughs> yeah. time. I'm not even close to that. Yeah. I, I, I'm fairly accurate. Um, yeah, you want to see my gun? Yeah, I would love to see your gun. Yay! Just kidding! <laughs> it's a joke! Yay! <laughs> no, it's safe. Um, it's safe loaded underneath his seat. <laughs> no, it's, it's duct tape under the chair. Chris is like, wait! You're he doing does... some Samuel L. Jackson yeah. shit. 
but <laughs> yeah oh, that's for, phenomenal yeah. so for a while um yeah for, for a while like uh like basically i was like babe do you want to sleep with my gun on your side of the bed and then she got one and then i was able to sleep with mine on my side of the bed nice and, but like <laughs> let there be no confusion if an intruder comes into our bedroom my girlfriend is going to handle it that's uh that's awesome you don't want murder on your conscience and soul <laughs> thanks babe no thanks for taking that up with god later yeah. <laughs> good luck yeah good luck i just had a front row seat <laughs> i'm just the victim ah! <laughs> <laughs> holy shit man yeah that like i i uh my girlfriend and i forget where we were at but um we had a friend observe, like, you're so kind to her. And I wanted to be like, you don't know what a good shot she is. <laughs> she could kill me. Dude, she's the best shot ever. <laughs> like, like, I, yeah. Yeah, that's that's so funny. But that's, do you really shoot? Are you? I, I don't go enough. It's expensive. Uh, I've been, I don't even know, maybe 14 times in my lifetime. Yeah. I'm addicted, though. It's fun. Uh, it's what I try to tell people anti-gun people i'm like go shoot a 22 and some tin cans come talk to me yeah it's it, it, it i mean as you well I'm, as you He's yeah got, yeah i'm i mean i'm very i'm a very liberal person but i like n i'm literally one of those people now where if you were like hey we're gonna everybody's got to turn all the guns in it's like australia i'd be like i'm not turning in my gun because there's a maniac who's not in jail yet and the, yeah. we have a criminal uh, trial that is pending. Um, and so, like, hopefully that's going to be done in the next month. Um, but and then maybe he, hopefully I don't know if he's going to go to jail. I don't know. But um, like then I'll feel safe, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's it's so weird. Like, you know, I one of my friends was like, you need to have forgiveness. You need to have forgiveness for this person. I'm like, you can't have forgiveness while the danger is still there. Yeah. <laughs> like that's why families, when you watch them on those murder documentaries, they're like, we go to, we go to prison, we visit him and we've forgiven him. It's like, yeah, because he's in, he's behind bars. Yeah. The he's not shaking <clears throat> your window. Yeah. And like, I'm going to walk and call you. Like, like, yeah. So it's, um, yeah. Until then I'm going to be real. Well, you must have bombed hard that night to get that stalker <laughs> yeah right what happened pete yeah what am I <laughs> yeah i'm gonna this act is murderable he no uh i always thought that i'd have like a hot female stalker that would just be like like lipstick <laughs> crazy but no i got i got a different kind it's always a, uh uh a schizo just a just a uh, the mind that makes you go to that world you're yeah so you're just not connected anymore. You're just unhinged, I guess. Unhinged, is, yeah. And is the word. Reality bends for this person. Yeah. And um uh I was surfing with um I was surfing with Moses Storm and it was so funny because like I was telling him, you know, I told him all about like the stalker situation and then he's like he goes, Who he goes, Who the fuck is that guy with the telephoto lens on the rocks right there? And I go, That's my stalker. And he was like, So you weren't kidding around i was like oh yeah he's always there like he's he's like god he's always there and um <laughs> moses had the funniest line he goes dude you don't even need an emergency contact because he's like there <laughs> yeah <laughs> he goes he goes he's either gonna kill you like he's either gonna be the one that kills you or he'll be there for you or, or, or do the heimlich on you when you're choking on that steak alone in the lonely night <laughs> yeah exactly you're like oh, oh, nothing's <laughs> gonna save me <laughs> i got this <laughs> <laughs> he saves your life and then kills you <laughs> yeah he's like i will live to you you will live for me to stalk another day <laughs> you will live to know it was me <laughs> yeah it it's, was me it's such a weird thing to have a stalker in covid where everybody's like you gotta stay like six to eight feet away and like you have somebody that's literally trying to like invade that bubble yeah you know it's weird wow it's, it's been a wild covid um yeah you should you should eat mushrooms. Yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> what if, what if I ate like a lot of mushrooms and I was like, "It's okay, buddy." <laughs> <laughs> Come on in, kill me. <laughs> Tur turns out this whole thing is resolved. <laughs> when you said I'm gonna fucking kill you, I was just reading that wrong. <laughs> <clears throat> oh man, that's yeah. so scary and it, hilarious. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. So crazy. Uh, um, 
I, I don't know. I hope it's okay that I talked about that. Isn't that crazy? Like, I'm one of the happiest comedians, and so far we've talked about, like, deep, dark drugs, uh, suicide, suicide, and depression, <laughs> and then having guns and a stalker. Well, that's what happened. This is exactly... This podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what are we going to talk about? What books are you reading, Pete? Oh, <laughs> well... I'm just kidding. Books are good. Well, I was reading a book called The State of Affairs. <laughs> I, I was reading... A, a book by my husband, Montgomery. <laughs> I just wanted to say Montgomery. <laughs> he he writes books and I'm his only audience. It's an audience of one. And I bring him Devon Jackery for his scone. This raspberry jam. And I say, let the chips fall where they may. Let the cookies, let the scone. <laughs> let the scones. Scrumpus. I, I lost my accent. Um, <laughs> we're gonna get canceled. We just pissed off the Brits. Yeah, you can't listen piss here, off you crikey cons. Don't be a con. <laughs> Fuck yeah. cancel. Fuck. Did you see what happened to Kevin Hart? He put a cuss word on his Nino. Take the child away. Child services. They called child. The fans threatened to call child services on Kevin Hart for him putting his baby in a onesie that said zero fucks. That's because terrific. that's the name of his special. That's terrific. That should have gave him a little tat. Little tattoo, <laughs> yeah, that's bad. Don't do that. I mean, I feel like the Kardashians, like they're all their kids have fake asses already, and then Kevin Hart. I, I'm kidding. I really don't think that. Don't if you're a Kardash head. Um, I don't know what their fans are called. Don't get after me. Um, um, she she does have a fake booty. You're allowed to say that. Yeah, when it's true. Have you seen pictures? Yeah, there's there's a there's some going on there. I don't know what it is. Kylie Jenner made a post the other day. I've been hit it. <laughs> my new hobby in quarantine is that I like to make comments on celebrities profiles that are funny and then like just see how many because like, they have millions of followers and like in oh, that's a good game. I love it. It's it's so fun. Um, but uh, Kylie Jenner, I wanted to she she had this post where it was like this hot top, but like nothing in her face looks like it did two years ago. And she, like I wanted to write like oh my god I love Michael Jackson because she's starting to look like Michael Jackson. <laughs> oh no! It, like she's got he was hot. <laughs> yeah, she was really hot and like that old Skeletor nose really got me going. Now it's like <laughs> it's like the, you can only have so many cosmetic surgeries on your face until you start to look like Michael Jackson did. Like late late Michael Jackson. Um, it, but like I was just like, what is she doing, man? She was. She was so hot naturally. Yeah, that's what I don't understand. That makes me sad. It's like you don't need. Okay, sure, you got a, a you know a deviated septum or a, or a fucking hair lip. You want a good, you want a little fish face? Go for it. But you you start getting addicted to this shit. You got you come out. Yeah, looking like a, looking like a. Like a rock face. No, what's that guy? I can't think quick enough. The the rock man on uh, Fantastic Four. Oh. The thing. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. what some people look like when they get those blocks under their cheeks. Yeah. I the, picture that. The Super filler. The, yeah, the, the filler people. Um, there's this lady on the Real Housewives of Las Vegas that she... You can't tell if she used to be ugly or if she used to be a guy, which if she used to be a guy, that's totally great. And I love that. And I love your community. But like this chick is just like, <laughs> I'm Shelly. <laughs> She's just got like so much filler in her face that she, yeah, she looks like a drawn superhero. Yeah. It's yeah. weird. It's fucking weird. But like, hey, block cheeks, why don't you take it back? Yeah. Take it back a notch. But I get like, I understand how you could have like you could be irrational with your face like i i bite my lip like and i don't know what it is i don't know if it's too much coffee or whatever but i'll like bite my lip and i in my head i'm like i have chapped lips and i need to get not chapped lips and i'll look in the mirror and i'm like i do not have chapped lips but my brain is like fucking get rid of those chapped lips so i could see how you'd be like yeah uh, like my nose fucking sucks and i gotta get a different nose and then you go get a different one but it's not like biting your lips where it just grows back to normal our minds our minds they could be good or bad sometimes you just chop your nose off if you're rich you know yeah. What are you going to do? That's like having a loaded gun, having enough money just to get those surgeries willy-nilly. Like, I mean, Kylie Jenner is one of the richest p 
people in the world now with her Kylie cosmetics. It's such a weird thing to get addicted to, but I get it. Stupid society in their fucking Barbie world, you know. Just you gotta, you gotta have a thin ass. Oh no, just kidding. Now it's gotta be fat. Sorry, ladies. Mm-hmm. Pick up the pound cake. And get it going. Get it going. Yeah. Remember back in the day, skinny, skinny was a thing. Yeah, I never liked that trend. I no, I always uh, I'm I'm Latino. I know I don't look it, but like a big fat ass. I love Oof. a big fat ass. Yeah, I love a big fat ass. I love if you got cellulite, bring oh, it. Oh, the dimples, <laughs> yeah. dimples, bring it. Like Puts, I lo- collects little puddles of oil is fantastic. <laughs> yeah, like um, <laughs> I saw um. I saw an Instagram. This is another one that I commented on the other day. Lizzo, um, she just like she was in a thong, uh, I think topless, and she had like turned like somebody had like thrown water on her, and it was like like photo. Um, but her her hand was like this, so I commented, "Cute nails." Um, but it was just her full backside, and it was beautiful. Yeah, uh, it was. I yeah. don't like a like a like a golf ball ass. You know what I mean? Like, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It was it was gorgeous. It was gorgeous. Um, yeah, yeah. Where do we go from there? I don't know. <laughs> there man. was so I much was trying to change it. <laughs> there was so I much got nothing to pee. There was so much Help visual me. imagery <laughs> there that. Uh, um, by the way, I love that you live in a neighborhood where, uh, like, the sign of one of the apartment buildings is just a surfboard with a number on it. Yeah, it's that's cool. What, that's how you know you live in a great place. I live in the beach. I live in the beach. Wait, wait, wait. It was more. I had it. Oh, I remember what I want to say. Ladies and dudes now, uh, but m- mostly ladies, just like whatever insecurity you do have about you and yourself and your body. There's straight up a dude that has a fetish for what you hate. Let's say you hate your feet. Oh, there's some weirdos out there for you. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, uh, so it's, it's uh, you know, easier said than done. Yeah, and chances are the guy that has the weird fetish for that thing that you hate is your boyfriend. And, and will love you forever. Yeah, and he's like, he's like, I can't tell you how much I love that thing because you'll think I'm a giant creep. Yeah. And yeah, so just like, but yeah, that uh, every girl though, like they go through that that phase. It's usually before they're getting ready for bed where they like pick at their face or whatever or they like... And they always shit talk themselves. And I'm always like, what? Don't talk about my girlfriend like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> don't talk to yourself, my girlfriend, that way. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, babe, I'm still going to hit it. It don't matter. Yeah. <laughs> well, guys. Yeah. I, Get I'm over st- here. Give me them dimples. <laughs> I'm still going to be annoying about hitting it. I'm still going <laughs> to. <laughs> Isn't that funny how guys' brains are? Like, like you like she could be she could be explaining to you like God, i feel fucking disgusting and i, no, I no, and going to let me hit it <laughs> yeah and i have diarrhea and i'm just you know and my dad died and you're still like but is there a chance i could get in there <laughs> yeah you, they say all that you're like but i have a boner you know like <laughs> sorry about your dad but check out this dick <laughs> 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 hey, look what I got! You know, taking your mind off your dad. Hey, but that's Hello, Willy Wonka. But that's because that's how our brains. Like, like if my if my dad died and my and I was like, just I fucking died or nothing makes sense. And my girlfriend was like, do you want me to suck your dick? I'd be like, yes, <laughs> that's exactly what would make me yes, so better. Like right ten now. minutes ago, <laughs> I definitely want like. Our male brains are so irrational. I was uh, I was flying home from a gig in COVID. I went and did like a gig out in the world in COVID. And then there was this hot girl going through TSA. And I was walking, you know, like the, the clear partition where there's like that one sad TSA guy that's like supposed to stop people if they were going to rush into the airport. Yeah. <laughs> and he's just like. He's like on a laptop trying to. Eight hours of this. Yeah. Ugh, I can't even check the my line. phone. No backseats. Don't. Don't. <laughs> no yeah, his whole job is don't. No. And no. <laughs> I'm like crossing that guy and I see a hot like a really hot girl going through TSA and my brain was like, "Oh, I got to look at her." And in that moment I was like, "What exactly is my thought process? Like, how is this going to happen? Like, um am I going to go to the ticket counter, book a flight, uh try to guess which gate she's at?" Get on the plane. Try to sit next to her. Uh, try to go somewhere. Try to meet her. Form a bond and a rapport to the point where we can have sex uh, within COVID. 
Find out where she lives. Go to her window. I'm gonna kill you. Yeah. I'm gonna... <laughs> but like, like what, what the fuck? Who's is... the stalker now, yeah. Pete? Who's the stalker? <laughs> but, but isn't that crazy that like our monkey brain, like you, you see a girl in this impossible scenario, and your brain is like, mate, must mate with her now, and then you couldn't, you couldn't even if you try. No. Women's brains would go, that's impossible. Next, like, like they're just way more. They wouldn't even see us. They wouldn't even see it. And they'd be like, oh, I wonder if Lulu Lemon's on sale today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what a great company name. <laughs> it is. It is. Good stuff. I that's have one, one pair. That's one. I have a. Uh, these are Lululemon pants, actually. These are. Yeah, they're stretchy, man. Yeah. I'm touching them. These are their. Mine it, are better. <laughs> yeah. Those, those are stretchy, too. And if I. Yeah. Those Yo, look stretchy. G Star right? stretchy. I got addicted, man. Mm-hmm. They're like jeans, but they're spandex. Sounds weird. I could bend my knees. <laughs> Remember that old fabric where you just get old lock jaw knee? What's mm-hmm. that called? Old lock knee monster. Is that a thing? <laughs> Lockland Patterson <laughs> knee. Oh, he's so funny. That he, guy. What a man. Talk about a man. He's you know how the, we're lesbians? He's a man. <laughs> yeah, he, he's a man. He's one of those guys where when he shakes my hand, like he has such a big strong hand from surfing yeah. that I'm, I'm like, like you're, you're a big strong man i'm like are big, you big man are you poseidon like, and he what just a- has a big hair and, and a huge dick <laughs> no, i'm just kidding yeah. i don't know that uh <laughs> he has a beard but he's like six four surfs and just builds shit uh-huh you're just like oh come all right tone it down dude <laughs> yeah, come back we get it Come back to yeah the wee hole over here. He he just had a kid. Like everything that <laughs> yeah. he does is this man. I'm a man. Yeah, <laughs> everything that he does is just like I'm manly and fertile. And it's like we know you have we a kid. Know. Oh, your flannel's more manly than mine. Damn yeah. it! Back to Ross. Yeah, start over. Who <laughs> 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 Um, I think he lives around here. I think he lives. Yeah, in... he's West Side. Mm-hmm. I believe. Yeah, he's the he's the best. Me and Francisco Ramos were actually talking about him, and Francisco was saying how he helped him with surfing and like in life, and we both had the exact same conversation. And he helped me a lot in comedy because I was just uh, stuck hosting everything, and yeah, I had uh. spots all the time. But you know, it's, and then he was just like, "No, man, you got to change your attitude about that." He's like, "Look at all the biggest comics in the world." They're hosts of late night mm-hmm. talk shows, t- you know, and and then he's like a good host makes a good headline, and you master that, you can master headlining much much quicker, and and it made me switch, and I was like, you're right. He's like the shows in your hands, you're you're the the maestro. You're right because there's so there are so many gigs where you go out and you're headlining, and the the host sucks. The feature sucks, and then you got to go out and like restart the show. Yeah, I just learned that. I'm you've been headlined forever. I just started. I started during the pandemic. What a time! <laughs> That's what amazing, time. though. That like, well, first of all, you're funny as shit. You're Thank one of the funniest that. people on the planet, and um, I can't even believe that you just you just started headlining during the pandemic. Isn't that some shit? I mean, it's it's Move legend. The beach started headlining. It's legendary. Could you imagine somebody being like, I started headlining during the Spanish flu of 1918. A million lives are lost, but I made some of them laugh. Some of them laugh. Before that last winks. Winks. What's it? Wisp? I Wheeze. Wheeze. <laughs> death, Damn it. Death rattle. <laughs> if we're just trying to if we're trying to play a, like a bingo card of all the worst shit that you could say on a podcast, I think death rattle should be on that. Oh yeah. Shabangas. Shabangas. What a time. Yeah. Mm. It's uh <laughs> I wrote a bit about how like if you're ever at a loss for words now, you can just go, yeah. Weird times, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fucking strange days. Weird times. Morrison man. was a time traveler. Strange days, Jim Morrison. <laughs> it's, it's a good song, man. Where was your first headlining gig in the pandemic? Okay, I say, so I, I it's, I had like some one-nighters, you know, mm-hmm. pre-pandemic, but like the first official real, real weekend was a house of comedy rick bronson's house of comedy tammy mcpherson thank you very much and i did uh 
Phoenix and Minnesota. Like mm. that was my first real weekends at a at a real club. Uh and it was during the peak of COVID. Damn. And uh I'd do it again. What's up? <laughs> yeah. What's up? Thanks for having me. The I started in comedy in Minnesota and there was a there was a club right across from where Rick Bronson's are is um called Knuckleheads. Yeah. Yeah. It was Knuckleheads. Oh, he's from Minnesota. Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't remember the name of the old club, but that's right. Knuckleheads. Yeah, it was it was right it was adjacent to the Hooters that was yep. on the fourth floor of the Mall of America. Oh, so you could, Hooters, if you were sitting Hooters. in the green room, you could smell Hooters wing sauce. <laughs> nice. And uh, yeah, uh, um, but yeah, people always like they'll go to Rick Bronson's and like in the pandemic, and they'll be like, "Dude, how how is how is that club?" And I'm like, "I don't know now. I don't know what anything is like in the pandemic." But was it fun? Yeah, yeah, yeah they did a good job doing the things. I, uh, yeah, every show was good except for Sunday. Sundays. <laughs> oh, some of those Sunday on shows on the road are just, oh. you, all you want to do is fly home that day. And then they're <laughs> like, no, but we got to, we got to try to squeeze a little bit more revenue for your week. And then yeah, it's just the black worst death. show. Uh, yeah. Nothing like doing 50 minutes to no response. Am I right, guys? Yeah. 45, 50. I did my time. Oh god. It's a Senate filibuster is what it is. You're <laughs> what just, the fuck is that? Man? You're just uh, <laughs> I like the word though. Filibuster. In the in the Senate you can kill a bill. Basically like there if there's a time limit, I think I'm saying this right. People can leave comments. If there's a time I say limit on a lot on, of stuff wrong, like, so you're in good company. Like we have to pass this bill by midnight or whatever. Um if you're against it, you can filibuster it. So, like, you just get up and speak for two hours, and then the next person that's behind you. Oh, I did. I know. I heard that devil's trick. Yeah, they'll like get up and read the. They'll like read the Bible, or they'll read whatever. Yeah. Um, it's a filibuster. It's a filibuster. What else? <laughs> what, what else? What? Else? We've covered filibusting. <laughs> <laughs> we've covered what else man <laughs> help me carry my show come on pete Fil filibusting fisting unrealistic <laughs> unrealistic tiger bomb tiger bomb tiger bomb tiger bomb have you uh have you seen the show queen's gambit on netflix no it's great you gotta watch it it's it's a it's a show that's so good it's about chess and it's still good no. that's what i'll say <laughs> that's uh, no thank you bobby fisher <laughs> that was a good movie searching for bobby fisher got me into chess never played once <laughs> yeah that um queen's gambit also like i i definitely have searched amazon like like chess set and i'm like well i can't get a plastic one i need to get one yeah, with marble pieces yeah. yeah i um yeah just i'm a checkers guy king me <laughs> yeah king me so easy checkmate yeah is that that's not Checkers? Oh yeah, that's, that's chess. <laughs> I said it confidently though, <laughs> no, which I, I don't like, say very many things very like, confidently. What? So that oh, was bro, that, that was worth it. Get it together, Pete. Get it together. Unbelievable. Have you um have you done any shows with people that have COVID and they got to do that like weird STD call where they call you and they're like, we were together and now you need to get checked. Have you had that? No, I haven't. I wouldn't get checked. Ignorance is bliss. What's up, mommy? No. <laughs> uh, I have not. Luckily, I have not. My cousin just got COVID after she went to Vegas. My cousin Lulu. Of course, it'd be the cousin named Lulu, wouldn't it? COVID. Yeah. And then she did my other cousin Lisa's hair. And uh, I don't know if they want me to talk about this, but get your own show. <laughs> Lulu. <laughs> Um, that sounds like a, like a Theo Vaughn word. She got that cousin COVID, yeah. <laughs> and then uh, my cousin Lisa's fine, but she's quarantined and to be safe, of course. Mm -hmm. And they canceled Thanksgiving, so thanks, Lulu. Where Lamone? <laughs> no, it's all right. I get it. I, I mean, I went to Vegas too. It could have been me. I'm just joking. Um, where, where was where was Thanksgiving supposed to be? Vegas or no? They just went to Vegas at, at my mom's house. It's big Mexican shit. Fucking too many of us, you know. And now uh, they're quarantining, and Thanksgiving got canceled. 
Are you going to do what they tell you to do on the news where they're they're like they always have that expert on about how to still have Thanksgiving in the pandemic? Like there's ever been a Thanksgiving in the pandemic. But the experts like, why not have a Zoom Thanksgiving? You can all cook a meal and agree on a time. I uh, Yeah, that expert can suck my dirty diarrhea butthole. Yeah, I after spicy Wendy's nuggets. Here's my butthole expert. Come get COVID. Mm -hmm. Mama's cooking. Yeah, come get butthole get your, COVID. Get the fuck out of here. These fucking... Uh, I'm going to sound like my dad. Oh, fuck the news and fuck mainstream media. Hey, mainstream media, how about you put five minutes of how to build your immune system up? Yeah. A diet, exercise, sun, soil. Stick your dick in the soil. Yeah, vitamin D. I've been saying D. that for a year now. Vitamin D. I've been sitting out in the sun a lot. It's a pandemic. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a pandemic. <laughs> But yeah, boost your immunity. Eat some yogurt. Get some uh, probiotics get in Get some ya. probiotics. Mm -hmm. Get some get some gas if you're like me. That's what it gives me. <laughs> oh, uh, but yeah, just don't get me started. That that fucking cuck. That cuck. Anyways, how are you, Pete? Anyways, I love that. <laughs> I it's it is weird because like I believe you know, the coronavirus is real. I've had several friends that have had one of my, my friend Dan just got it for the second time. So like, he's one of those people that they go, you can get it a second time. Like he actually got it. And he's like, dude, it's really bad. It's, it's like, it's really bad for a couple days and then you're better and you look back on it and you go, was that that bad? You know? Yeah. And, yeah. um, but, and then there's, you know, people that die and now CNN, but now CNN has a death ticker for the day. Have you seen it? Yeah. That sounds about right. How about a vitamin C ticker? Did you take a vitamin C? Yeah. CNN, shame on you, scaring the people. They're all a bunch of pussies. They get scared easy. What if that's, what if that, what if the death ticker is so successful that CNN in the future is like car crash deaths, <laughs> cardiac deaths, <laughs> <laughs> diabetes deaths, and like we're just all watching it all day. The like, fact this is that, insane. No, that, the fact that pe more people aren't questioning that and be like, do you need to have that on? Can't you just report it? Yeah, you could just report just it. Like, oh, it was sad news today. Those nineteen COVID nineteen deaths. Yeah, nineteen. <laughs> when the when the number reaches the critical mass of nineteen, I think of another number. <laughs> <laughs> I just had so many number in my head. And then, uh, yeah, just say that. Can't you say that? You got the ticker on. Yeah, you got to have the ticker. I wish, it, like, um, like you know. Um, you know, like the random number generator thing where uh, I'm trying to think of an example of it. Like in New York, they have the national debt and it's always calculating. Yeah. But it looks fascinating the way the numbers are spinning. I think that's how they should have the death ticker. So that you're like, what's it going to be? And it ran, yeah, just once at the end, like lotto mm -hmm. numbers, do lottery numbers mm -hmm. and then death. <laughs> hey, here's a good day. Bad day. Bad day. Oh, my God. You just you just stumbled upon something brilliant. That should be our lottery. If you can guess the deaths, <laughs> if you can guess the accurate amount, and it, but it's got to be like the lottery where it's five numbers. So you like, um, you can do like a Arizona, yeah, like California, a, yeah. <laughs> Boy, this is dark. <laughs> See, we we've really gone dark on this one. <laughs> Thanks, Lulu. <laughs> <laughs> I brought I brought Pete Lee, the happy comedian, yeah. on, and we went super dark. Speaking we, of dark, my cousin Lulu's dark. You don't know it. <laughs> <laughs> what food do you eat at a traditional um, Mexican Thanksgiving? Oh, we're 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 whitewashed. We're Americanized. We go. Okay. We do normal shit. But there'll be some tortillas and some hot sauce. Maybe like the corn will be with uh, zucchini butter and cheese and like that that fucking Jesus Christ! I'm whitewashed. That little that little cactus. Napolis. 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 Not a, Help me out here, gringos. Come on. Right now we're looking at you like, it's like, a, like if we don't I believe know it's the called, answer, are we racist? <laughs> <laughs> you racist <laughs> schmucks. No, I believe it's called uh, <clears throat> Napolis. Anyways. A Napolis. Yeah, we'll have like one or two or three things Mexican, but it's it's stuffing, cranberry sauce, mashed potatoes, turkey. Turkey. So my dad's a big dickhead, and uh, no, he's he's, you, he's, you know he's the best. Yeah. <laughs> he makes my sister. I love my dad. We get along now. He was a little crazy for most of my life, but he's the best. 
and I love giving him a hard time. Check out my Instagram if you want to see me harass him constantly. It's fantastic. <laughs> Anyways, he always wants Thanksgiving dinner, so we have it like four to six times a year, and my <laughs> sister's just like, oh, he bought another, chi-. like he'll buy chicken or turkey, whatever's on sale, but the whole thing, it's still the same process. A large chicken is the same process as a large turkey. And uh, yeah, it's she's a pain in like, the ass. Yeah, and my sister like will like go take a break from work, season the chicken or turkey, and then put it in the oven, and then come back later, and then prep everything, make the stuffing, the gravy. It's fantastic for us. Uh, it sucks that she's such a good cook because my sister Nicole is so good that no one else can cook mm-hmm. because it's just like oh we fucked it up. Just she's just like. Making brujolet sauce, you know. <laughs> brujolet sauce. Brujolet and, you know, fancy stuff. Brugelet. Lemony schnickets. <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs> you know that Topo Chico lay sauce? Yeah, Topo Chico lay. <laughs> it's and, got a uh, Topo Chico base. She's just good, dude. And and everyone can cook, but she's just next level. That's the brand of the shirt. That's what we print on. Next level. Cotton. Next level. And then, uh, yeah, so anyways... Uh, so I get my fair share of Thanksgiving dinners. That's I feel like most Thanksgiving dinners, the turkey is cooked by a total amateur that just isn't used to cooking that particular meat. Yeah, get your get your white dry ass turkey uh-huh. out of here, Patricia. Yeah, <laughs> like if you're from a divorced family like I am, and you have like four Thanksgivings, maybe one of those turkeys is going to be to die for. But that's you, my sister Nicole. Have all oh, out of the park, mm-hmm. bro. Juicy. We don't need no deep fryer. Frying a whole turkey frozen. You're going to blow your house up, amateur hour. Get it together, Pablo. (laughs) Ah, Jesus. (laughs) Why is that so funny? That's so funny. Just to say Pablo in like a derogatory. Pablo. Pablo. Okay, Petey. Okay, Petey. Pablo. Isn't that a rapper or some shit? Petey Pablo. Yeah. Pablo. He sung Freak a Leak. Do you understand that there? <laughs> How do you know that? Do you understand that there are people in my life that I've spent real time with, and if they walked up to me right now, I'd go, "Oh God, Steve, Kevin, oh, what's your name?" And I know <laughs> Petey Pablo's name. That's stupid. It's good though. It's good. It's good. I know Chingy. Remember Chingy? Oh yeah, Chinga Lang. I, I like that when you shake it right there. Is that him? No. Yeah. Definitely not. I had to do a show. I yeah, it is. I opened for Chingy one time what? at college. It was like, <laughs> uh, God, it was like you I know, have a stalker. I have a gun. I opened for Chingy. <laughs> I opened for Chingy. Um, it was uh, so I. It was this year. I did 187 colleges. It's like an insane amount of schools to do in a year. 187 on a motherfucking. God. College. <laughs> <laughs> Too dark. Can't make jokes about that. Puss puss. <laughs> um, but so they were like the student activities board is usually filled with some of the best they're like really good people like you know the kind of people that you're like did you all meet at a fundraiser you know like those kinds yeah. of people and um they called me up and they, it was like western connecticut university or something like that and they're like we're having our spring fling and we have uh we have a big budget um and i was like oh good i'm gonna make a lot of money and they're like so we're gonna bring in chingy and then we're gonna get you for your normal fee to open for him and i was like oh okay you can't, you can't give me a little you can't give me a little extra a little slice of that ching chingling give me chingling <laughs> money little piece and one notch of his necklace come on something yeah a little gold even if you let me sweep up his dressing room after he's in there and maybe one of the stones falls off yeah. and i get to go a jewel a jewel <laughs> a jewel that i cannot smoke <laughs> ah. <laughs> Tom Foolery. but i thought it was going to be this triumphant day where i like i go up and i crush and then i'm like and introducing chingy and the crowd it was terrible and right? the crowd goes nuts um the crowd was actually pretty cool and i had a pretty good set but i was like ladies and gentlemen chingy and then the crowd went nuts and then he went on an hour and a half later because i didn't i didn't know that it's cool as as a rapper to like hold the house that's but, not cool that's fucked up I thought it was fucked up. I'm a rule follower. I was like, no, um, that's just an asshole. Mr. Chingy. Fuck. Maybe or... wake him wait 10, 20 minutes, an hour and a half. Okay. Chingy, where are you at now? You ain't by the beach like me, are you? Yeah. Get your stones <laughs> out of here. Hour and a half. No wonder you didn't cut it. 
Chingy. Should have took a lesson from Tupac. <laughs> <laughs> Tupac was on time. Yeah. <laughs> Dear mama. What are we talking about? <laughs> I, I had something. Chingy. I had something. Uh, oh, I remember watching Hannibal Buress open up for TV on the radio at the Palladium. And it was awful because it's a rock show. And Cannibal Beerus is very funny, but it's just like the circumstances were terrible for comedy. You got a bunch of drunk, rowdy rockers ready to rock. They don't want to listen to setups and punchlines. Yeah. I hey, wolf. I saw uh, a fundraiser. It was specifically a uh, a fundraiser for Jewish education at the Palladium. And some of my best friends were on the show, and I just came to hang out and specifically watch them bomb and it was the funniest fucking oh, thing. comics watching their friends bomb is the oh. <laughs> the hardest i ever laughed i was howling oh my god i was howling uh one of my friends uh who's a dear friend who i won't i won't say the name because uh, i don't want to disparage but on the patreon we'll name her yeah we'll name her on the patreon <laughs> um <laughs> she started bombing and then just went so blue and I was, it's the best show that I've ever seen. Like I, the, the whole, the, I mean, there were a thousand people there that hated her guts and I was fucking wiping tears going, this is the best. Oh my God. <laughs> it was so great to watch her in front of a crowd, like be like, and my pussy. <laughs> He's like, oh my God. <laughs> Everyone was like clutching their pearls. Yeah. Like my dear, <laughs> my dear. <laughs> Like Who paid for this. I did. It was. I did. It was so beautiful. And then we went out to the best dinner and laughed about it afterwards. It was great. Yeah, those are the best. I love witnessing that shit. I hate being the person. Oh, it sucks when you're in the middle of that filibuster. Hey, hey! All <laughs> back. I had to think to compute that joke. I was like, "Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> the filibuster." Right. One of my buddies was bombing at a bar show, and he did the classic, like, "Wow, ah, tough crowd," and it <laughs> killed me. <laughs> it was so fun. Why is something so silly and slapstick like that so funny? It's just it's funny when stuff is wrong, and I mean that's why. It, that's why so many comics get canceled for things that they say is because like we're we're childish and we want to say something that's the most wrong even if we don't believe it. Right? Absolutely. And but so yeah, like like whenever you can find an occasion where your buddy is just bombing on stage and then you can egg it on. I I have this friend in Minnesota named Hartman who like uh, we don't even we say his name in all caps. We're like Hartman. Yeah. Like, like he's just drunk all the time and he's the most fun guy. And um, he he's just, Hartman is just the best. Um, but I was at this show at a Chili's. It was it was at a Chili's restaurant in Minnesota. And like it's the Chili's. It's right by the Mall of America. And um and like I had this bit that was just killer. And I don't even remember what the words were, but it like had something to do with like fat women and enchiladas. <laughs> and nice. Hartman had been to like all of my shows and the only people in the show, like the, like nobody We're was- fat women eating enchiladas. <laughs> literally, li literally that. And, um, and Hartman, I'm just bombing. They're not liking anything. And the one group of people that are, is actually enjoying me is this group of fat women. And, um, and I was like, and Hartman kept going, he kept going, do the bit about the enchiladas. <laughs> <laughs> Did you? And I was like, no, I can't do that one here. I just can't do it. And even that table, they're like, we want to know what the enchiladas joke oh, is. Oh, God bless Hartman. God bless Hartman. <laughs> do the bit about the enchiladas. Did you do it? No, I didn't do oh, it. I was like, I, was like, I can't plus. do it. I wouldn't have done it either. <laughs> I was like, I can't do it. <laughs> I can't have the the victim of the joke be sitting right there. I, can't. I tell you what, though, I did uh, a women's convention, a AA, or I, I don't even know what it was. I don't know if I'm allowed to label it. Who cares? It was a sober convention for women, and I did it. And I have all these jokes about my mama's big booty mm -hmm. and and her wearing girdles and us shoving pencils in her ass crack and shit. <laughs> And I'm, and I'm just like they're my favorite bits because it's just true childhood stories. It's just funny. Yeah, the girdle, the bit. It's my favorite. It's about her farting and it rolls up her back because her girdle's so tight, <laughs> <laughs> and she's 
And it's true. She's her. She's been quacking up her back her whole life, like and, a uh, smokestack. Yeah, it just, <laughs> it just pops. You see her roll with it. That's the whole bit. It's so funny and true. If you saw my mom fart, you'd be like, "Oh, yeah, truth." Uh, and your then mom, I, your mom can have a swimsuit fart dry. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they like roll up. <laughs> so um, so now I'm in my head, and it, it's it's convention. Like it's an annual convention. So people, women around the world fly in. Uh, uh, maybe not world, but countries. There's two thousand women. Mm-hmm. It's two. Th- it's a lot of women. Two thousand women is a lot. I mean, that's a I lot mean, of people. No dudes. No, no. Uh, no dudes allowed. Other than the the wait staff. So workers and me, the one male comment. God bless you, Tammy Jo Darren. She booked me for this. Yeah. And I and I was and I was I was nervous. First of all, it's this huge crowd, and uh, I had done some big crowds before, but like it, it, it's just not one hundred percent women. And then she's like, "Just do your act." She could tell I was in my head, and I did it, and it ripped, and they all came up me like, "I love, I love the girdle fart bit because it's yes. a lot of girdle." They because they knew I'm talking about my mom. It's a place of love. It's not like. But you before Fuck that fat ass. <laughs> no, it's, <laughs> it's love. It is love in those bits. I love telling them still. They're older bits, but it's I love them because they're about my mom, who I love, and it's a funny, true story. And so yeah. I thank God. You know, they could always tell. There's one little There's fly, fly in here, by the way. <laughs> and He's been after him the whole time. Hasn't touched me. I don't know what it is. Like maybe it's my Kiehl's face lotion. <laughs> I think this no, fly is like I gotta get some of that Kiehl's. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> This is a fancy man. I was going to make a shit joke and I bailed. I was like, it's definitely the shit on your lip. I don't even know. I didn't finish it. I was just like, yeah, it's not worth it. And I bailed. <laughs> what if I, what if that was my trigger? Like I used to have, have shit to on my lip go. forever. And it's hurtful. <laughs> um, but yeah, that not that weird at those, uh, like when you're doing a show, that's a very specific thing. And it's usually for more money than you would normally get, but mm-hmm. you're like, you like backstage, like, God, I wonder if the if the fart up the back bit is going to be offensive to them or they're going to love yeah. it. Because at a comedy club, you just do your shit, you don't think twice about it, but then you're just like, oh my god, this is different. Yeah. Um, comedy clubs are a mixture. You're not worrying about the demographics of it because it's just kind of a mixture of everybody that's yeah. there. Uh, but yeah, when you get to, I had a. A corporate that was one of the best corporates I've ever had, but it was um, it was fifteen uh, fem- of the top female CEOs in the country, and it was in Aspen, Colorado. So I'm already at altitude. Oh God, I just had a Topo Chico burp. Oh yeah, I call those throw up burps. Oh my God, that was amazing. <laughs> it was it it was a weird moment because I'm talking about these these 15 female CEOs and then the burp is coming, so it looked like I was getting emotional about the about about <laughs> Women the about the gravity. So, right, <laughs> and just cry. I was just so proud of them yeah. for their achievements, um, which I was. But um, I went into it just going, I'm I'm at altitude. My brain's already not working. Um, you know what it what is this event going to be like? And then it turned out to be like the it was one of those shows where i was supposed to do a half an hour and i ended up doing an hour and then um, my girlfriend jamie was there and i talked about her during the set and then they brought us both in and did a q a nice. and then we got like wine drunk with them afterwards yeah. and they were <laughs> they were the best and then they just booked me for a virtual corporate in december nice. so it's but it, like uh, the the anxiety of a comedian before a show is unparalleled like I, I always think about uh, like I remember when I was a little kid, um, I went to go see Jerry Seinfeld and I remember just like all day being like, holy fuck, we're going to see Seinfeld and not knowing that like I guarantee that the day of the gig Seinfeld was like, what's this going to fucking be? Yeah, <laughs> you know? it's so weird how the comedian's brain is just going like, what what is the worst case scenario and will it happen tonight? And it probably will no it's always too what you just said like some of the gigs you think is going to be horrible end up being the best gigs you're they're like, the oh best my gigs God, that was amazing they're so great and you're you know there are the there i call it like the audience slot machine where like once in every 200 pulls of the lever it's going to come up exactly your worst nightmare that you prepared oh, for that day <laughs> yes and you're just you're just up there sweating oh, being like don't look nervous take a, a breath it's the hardest 10 minutes of my life it's a lot of COVID shows have been like that mm-hmm. a lot of rowdy bar shows are just like weird shows and you're just like fuck 
Yeah. We've all, it's just odd times. It's odd times. I, I did a show at the, you've done the Irvine drive-in, right? No, but I've done the Magic Castle drive-in a bunch. The Magic Castle drive-in, I did that one for Tammy Joe. It was amazing. I did the Irvine drive-in, and it was so fun in the summer, but we had one a couple nights ago that it was like freezing cold. It was it was the most cold, and I was up last, so everyone was literally cold, and half of the crowd had gone from their lawn chairs to inside again. Yeah. And if you want to go to the Irvine drive-in, you should go because it's not as cold as it was, and it's going to be awesome the next time you go. But I, I had to go last, and then I also had to follow Ian Bag. Where Ian Bag, that it was the funniest, one of the funniest sets I've ever seen in my life. Like, like the, it was against all odds, and he was like, "I'm funnier than that." Yeah, and he was brilliant. So funny. He yeah. was brilliant, and his best like third punchline of a joke was better than my best punchline of, of you know, like anything. And uh, I just went up and I I just knew that I was going to eat shit. Like, I, yeah. I could feel it. I went up and I was like, hello. And the crowd was like, what? Yeah, there's another one. Yeah. <laughs> we <laughs> was the climax. He Get was. Out of here. He was the climax. You're giving and- us warm up sex after the shabango. <laughs> yeah. And I've never had a bad <laughs> set down in Irvine ever. And this was one where I just had to like muscle through it. And you like, you know, that you know, where like a joke will bomb and then you like have a funny line about it bombing. And so you like, you're still getting laughs. I was like muscling, ev- like squeezing every little bit of juice out of that crowd just so that I could, when I got off stage, I didn't have to look at the club manager and go, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Here's 12 bucks back. Yeah, here it is. But, oh. but it looks like I'm going to do another one of those soon, so I get a rematch. Do you ever do that where you like you have a, a good bomb, you throw a stinker out there? and then Oh, yeah. Like, I'll come back. You see it on I'll your come calendar. come back with the same bits. Yeah. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I am about to pee my pants, and we've been rolling. We've This is a good one, bro. How long? This is a good one. This is a good one, Pete. I feel it. Um, do you ever go to check your phone and the only notifications aren't text messages or anybody that wanted to call you, but it's like ESPN with a women's soccer update. <laughs> <laughs> they, they played a friendly in Barcelona. <laughs> Barcelona. <laughs> Spanish. Ta, ta, ta. Arrosa. Arrosa. Arroz con pollo. What do they do that? Barcelona. 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 Hey, hey, Barcelona. You sound like a fucking idiot. <laughs> My favorite. <laughs> Speak like the Mexicans, like a real Mexican. Spanish. I know you. You did your dirty work down there. I know. <laughs> you fucking thaw, thaw. get your thaw out of here. Yeah, and then all my Spanish fan. I said it. I said it. My Chicano favorite. Chicano power, bitches. My sorry. favorite word is is beans. <laughs> Are you going to have the banth? Yeah, <laughs> banth. Why do they always add the th? Uh, I grew up with uh, my. Uh, mom is fluent in spanish but uh my grandma is from mexico city or chihuahua in mexico city so i didn't i didn't like you know i met spanish people later and i'm like what the fuck are you doing guys <laughs> that's not how it sounds <laughs> it tripped me out it tripped me out and it's just funny it is it's it, it's funny i don't know it's, it is right barcelona barcelona <laughs> I, I was shooting a pilot during the quarantine for comedy central and uh there was this little kid that they they got him a Nintendo Switch, I think that's a thing, and they put they just put a bag of beans in the box, and then he opened it up for Christmas, and he's crying his his fucking face off because he want he was like, oh my god, I'm getting in the Nintendo Switch, and then he got beans, and so uh, we were trying to figure out what's funny about it so that I could make fun of it because it was just it was a clip show where I made fun of stuff, and um and I was like, well the word banth is funny. So I was like, so I just did this big riff where I was like, oh, I'm so sorry about your bath. Yeah. And, you know, little boy, your bath, that is a good present. <laughs> and um, and then Comedy Central, they're like censors uh, like that allow everything that's been on Comedy Central. Like they have a talking piece of shit on Comedy Central. <laughs> on but South they wouldn't Park. allow that. They were, they were like, but they allowed the clip of the bath in the first place. Yeah. Well, you the- set them up. Exactly. It was a setup. But that, yeah, the censor, uh, the censor lady was like, like, you can't say that. That's offensive to Latinos. And I was like, whatever, this is fucked. This is fucked that I can't say banth. 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 <laughs> banth. If, if you're watching this right now and you're offended, if you're triggered by me saying banth. Then you could go suck some banth. Yeah. 
Then you go put a what a bent in your mouth. Then go eat some bent and then blow it out your butthole. <laughs> yeah, blow it out your butthole. <laughs> you go visit Lulu and get the bent nineteen. <laughs> Bath 19. <laughs> Bath dash 19. <laughs> this Bath. is this has been such a fun conversation. And like, I don't know if you're like me, but like I hadn't talked to anybody today because I, you know, I woke up and my girlfriend does telehealth. And uh, and so I talked to her like in between one of her telehealth breaks. Um, like she she's like basically a psychiatrist. And um, and so I talked to her for like a minute and then I got in the car and I talked to nobody. And then I got here. So this felt like. Like yeah. in the middle of the conversation, I I got warmed up to speech. And speech. Yeah, I know. I didn't talk to nobody. But you're him, this guy. Yeah, <laughs> talk to the dolphins. <laughs> Isn't that weird that you have dolphins in your front yard? Yes, <laughs> I got dolphins. Hey, you seen the neighbor Flipper? Mm -hmm. He's got a big blowhole. <laughs> 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 dude i love oh, you man shit. you're I like you too, you're one of the best people you I, I always get happy to talk to you Thank the you. fact that now you live in by the beach is even cooler like i fucking made it dude dude you made it hey remember when we were in jfl together and we went to that weed store for you you needed some cbds oh but my there was a line around the block god yeah we had that the... popped in my head the other day i don't know it popped up on memories yeah we went all the way across montreal in like crazy la traffic that was in montreal yeah and then we got to the weed store and you're such a laid-back guy that you were like we don't need to go and i was like oh thank you for not being mad that we went all the way over here oh yeah I, yeah. I uh that I didn't have a hotel that day, so I was I was homeless. You saved me, bro. Oh god. I was like free Uber ride. I can sit down. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking homeless at the hotel, just hanging in the lobby. <laughs> that was like one of those uh those Prince moments. Have you ever heard of that uh, Matt Damon like was backstage at a Prince concert and he was like, So do you still live in Minnetonka? And Prince goes, Prince lives wherever Prince's heart lies that day. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's what you were doing that day in Montreal. You were like, I live yeah. wherever I'm at. Um, yeah, I was homeless that night. Uh, just slept in the lobby with my luggage. Was that like a 3 a.m. flight night? Was that one of those things where you're like, Why would I stay? Why would I pay like the... Or... I, I actually, it was a why would I, but also it was booked out, sold out, and I forgot. I just forgot. Uh... I told the story a bunch, but uh, I was getting ready to leave for the day. And my buddy, uh, Brad Davis Silnitzer was like, you got a hotel another night? Like basically saying, it's hard. Like, how'd you get a hotel? And I was like, oh no, <laughs> I did it. And I ran back up, packed, put it the luggage at the hotel storage, and then was homeless for the day. I mean, and it, it was fine. But then that last final hours, because uh, uh, I was on the same flight back to Los Angeles that got canceled. Were you on that one too? Uh, I was on that one, and I had to stay for an extra day. I like I ended up staying an extra day. Oh, in we well, we all got bamboozled because we all were at the airport, and I mean, the lineup, dude. I was hanging with Jesselnick and Pete Holmes and Louis Anderson and and and. And I can't even Blair Sochi, Jack Knight, fucking Megan Gailey. We're just sitting around. Isn't that weird? Where and, you're like at an airport like that, going, "This is normal that Howie Mandel is sitting right yeah. there." <laughs> at all, and then like they even said on the announcements, an announcement, Barcelona. They said uh, <laughs> that uh, <laughs> the announcement, the announcement <laughs> that uh, they got. They were like, "There are no other flights. You don't have to come up here." Because those engine failure, they had to wait for another plane. They're like, in six hours, another plane will get here, and that's it. We could give you a food voucher. That's all that can be done. Sure enough, everyone went up to yell at them anyways. Like we just said, there's no solution here, guys. There's no other flight. This fucking it. Yeah, I, I was... Uh, I, I don't know if that was the canceled flight that I was on, but uh, I had to stay in Montreal for an extra day. So like you know how there's the whole roadway where there's like all the 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 like uh, exhibits and stuff for yeah. JFL. I was like in my hotel room talking to my girlfriend on on the phone while they were going like yeah and like taking up. down they were like taking down all the fun yeah and then I went to walk around and um like a day before that I was like walking around with you and then just nobody was there I was just hoping for like like a random Sklar brother yeah, to appear <laughs> <laughs> yeah you stayed the bonus day yeah yeah you definitely weren't in the I mean mm. it's, it still would have been better because we were just fucked we were just fucked we just sat there 
People were getting drunk, telling stories. It was actually really cool for me. I was just soaking it all up, fly on the wall, and it was so fun. But, it, you know, it sucks. We all were on two to three hours sleep, homeless sleep. Mm-hmm. You know, that couch upright sleep. Craig, what are you doing up so early? Why like, well, you got your luggage? <laughs> you going to the airport? <laughs> I need a ride. And it's so uh, funny that everybody's looking at it like, wow, Craig's really responsible. Like, <laughs> like he got up early and packed up and went all the way to the lobby. Yeah, had nowhere to go. Had good, nowhere to go. Good for Craig. I think I saw you that night when I was, I think I was like going up to my hotel room and I saw you. Yeah. And I was like, night, I, Craig. <laughs> I saw a lot of people. The big comfy couch is right by the elevators. What are you going to do? Going to, what room are you in? Got <laughs> food done. <laughs> I'm uh yeah I'm in the lobby. It's like it's the best room because it's got yeah. free Wi-Fi. Oh, yeah, it's like pretty oh, sweet. LED lights, man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Get a tan. Can't go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, before we go, can I can I tell people? I know you have a lot of listeners. Can I tell them my Instagram? Yeah, of course. We'll tag you and everything. No, we got one oh. final question. Oh, we do have one it's final. Pete Lee, everybody. Okay. His Instagram handle is Pete Lee, Pete Lee, Pete Lee, Pete Lee, Barcelona, Barcelona. Junk to stay dehydrated. <laughs> one, two, three. Did I say stay dehydrated? <laughs> we'll see. And then uh, we got a final question on here. What uh, poopa loop story you got for me? What you shit your bed? You, oh. you, you bent over and sprayed your nana in the eye. Something real <laughs> juicy. A oh. good poops. I have a good, yeah, I have a good uh, poop story. So I had just gotten on Zoloft and um, uh, and I was... Uh, so this was yesterday. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, or no, no, no. I wasn't on Zoloft. I had I'd taken Klonopin, um, which I didn't know that Klonopin... I wasn't a fan of that one. Can't remember the high. Yeah, clonopin is like, and, and like I'm, I'm such a, a puss when it comes to drugs that like I'll, I'll take like the point two five clonopin and I'm like, whoa. So I got on, um, I got on an airplane to fly to New York City because I was doing the Tonight Show, and then a part of that was that Jimmy, uh, at the time, he was executive producing my sitcom on NBC. So I was like gonna do the Tonight Show, and then I was gonna have this. Like my reps had set me up for like, when you're there, you're going to have this talk with Jimmy about the sitcom. And, uh, and I was like, Ooh, you know? Um, so I was like all nervous to get on the flight. I just wanted to sleep. So, um, uh, then I was flying first class, right? Ooh, like, like first whoa. class. I've never done that. <laughs> In like one of those like lay down beds, like ring, ring, yes. ring, 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 you know? Yeah. And, um, uh, and I took the Klonopin and then I guess I must have already had to kind of poop and, uh, and I drank too much coffee earlier and I was hoping the Klonopin would like even it out. And I'm in the airplane and you know, when you're just oh. bored and you're watching that screen that has like the miles per hour. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and then I just like went to like let out a fart and then I just shit my pants in oh. first class. <laughs> Ooh, if the, there's any place to do it. Yeah. And like, I remember watching the, the speedometer for like the air, the, it's like air speed or whatever. And it was like, it was like 459 miles an hour. And I was like, that was like 460. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was faster. I was faster. <laughs> that day I was fast. Take that, New York. <laughs> and so, but I was on Klonopin, so I was like more laid back than I, like I'm normally very OCD. Like if I shit my pants, I'd be like, oh God, I got to do something immediately. And um, and it was just like a little bit, you know? Uh, And so like, but I was like, I shit my pants and I was like, now let's just take a second and be in the moment. <laughs> and come to you later. Hey, Jimmy, come smell my fingers. <laughs> come smell my fingers. Yeah. Hey, hey, how's this for sitcom? <laughs> <laughs> Call me Pete Stink Finks. <laughs> So I um so I get out my phone and I text my girlfriend. I was like, "Hey, uh, does like like you you work in psych? You know, like she she's a, a psych med prescriber. She's not my prescriber, but I was like, you know a lot about psych meds. Um, uh, I was like, does Klonopin make you shit your pants? And she was like, No, definitely not. Like, <laughs> no, this is definitely something no, else. You're disgusting. And she yeah she was and like, we're not having sex tonight. Literally, that's she was like, so wait, did you like shit your pants and go clean it up? I was like, no, it's still there. I just wanted to know before I went no. to the bathroom. No, I'm just waiting for it to get cold. Yeah, <laughs> I don't. Yeah, I don't know. It, it, you know that like like you know when you do a dip cone and it hardens. I was yeah, like, maybe it'll harden yeah. and I can just flake maybe it. Maybe easier to clean out if it, if it flakes off. Yeah, I don't know what. Any, it, anybody want a Hershey's kiss? <laughs> 
Ew. And like it definitely smelled. And so like I, I I finished that conversation with her, and then I just like got up to the bed ba- and got went to the bathroom and like threw away my underwear. Like mm. like it wasn't it like it uh if it was Game of Thrones, like it hadn't like breached the wall, you know, like like yeah. it was still in butt cheeks. So I took I took moist wipes and I I like baby wiped myself, you know, back to normal. It's when a, and it's, a thicker ass comes into play. Yeah, yeah. Those the squats I was doing at the time definitely came into <laughs> you play. You got long butt cheeks. You're getting good luck. <laughs> <laughs> we got long bottomed Lee. <laughs> A hey, Frank fat ass. I mean flat ass. I meant say flat. Damn it. <laughs> oh flat ass Frank. Flapjacks. Fra- Even but- a Hugh would do. <laughs> He's got some poo. So I I start to I get back to my seat and like all's all's better and like uh and I'd also gotten to like go to the bathroom on the plane, which by the way, there's nothing more luxurious than that than like pooping in the sky. You know, like, like yeah. that that's amazing. You're just like, this is wealth. This yeah. <laughs> just dropping blue turds on earth. Yeah. I'm just <laughs> I'm just flying over Wyoming going, yeah. you know. And Take uh, that way. you're a flyer. Oh, you're a poo over state now. <laughs> yeah, they call you a flyover, you poo. You poo. poo over in my book. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, Wyoming, book me. I'll come. Please I'll come book even us. Even during COVID. Please book us. Cheyenne, Cheyenne Funny Bone. Yeah, I've never done it. I yet, yet to do it. I've yet, I got to change my vibration. I've yet to do it. Come on, Cheyenne. Anyways. Come on, Cheyenne. Come on, Cheyenne. So my girlfriend texts me and she was like, you know, I had a thought that like maybe, um, maybe this is like the universe you know, knowing that like you're, you've always been like a pretty humble guy and then you're going, you know, you're flying to, uh, to New York first class, do the tonight show to talk about your sitcom. Like maybe this is like the universe or God's way of like humbling. you. Absolutely. Yeah. And I was like, what kind of fucking, what kind of gangster shit is that for God to be like, <laughs> it's the kind of God like, I believe in. Like, remember if you ever get too big for your britches, you will shit them in the sky. <laughs> I will find you. <laughs> I will find you. And you will poop your pants. Yeah. So that's uh, my, that's, that's my a poop good story. one, man. Nothing like a shit fart in first class. Yeah. Mm. How often do you shit your pants? Would you say? Hmm. I uh, did a wet fart two nights ago, and I didn't get up to clean it. <laughs> Just woke up with a spicy ass, and it burned a little bit. Uh, I'm not proud of myself. <laughs> no, I, I, was in, I was in deep sleep. It's cold. The floor is cold. Yeah, it gets cold at night by the beach. Yeah. <laughs> That's your excuse. I was at the beach. I was at the beach. No, it's a it's a combo. I'm a gross. First of all, I'm gross. Second of all, I'm probably lactose intolerant. And uh, I eat Ben and Jerry's. I eat cheese, protein bars, eggs. Yeah. I don't give a fuck. I eat I all fart of it. stink and I squirt out my ass sometimes. That, yeah. That's life. It that's happens. Life. What am I going to not have? Chunky monkey? Are you fucking insane? Speaking of the Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon, he's got a flavor. Really? I got it in my fridge. It's fucking brownie fudge and and chocolate chip cookie dough with vanilla and chocolate ice creams with caramel. Come on. You ain't got to be a stoner to appreciate that. All right. I guess I know what I'm buying on my way home. Oh, you can have a spoonful. It's got my germs all in it. (laughs) (laughs) How'd you get COVID? From from Craig's. From Fallon. (laughs) Yep. Jimmy Fallon's ice cream. (laughs) You didn't wear it with Fallon? No, the ice cream. (laughs) <laughs> it was oh. friendly COVID. It yeah. was like, yeah. hey guys, I'm Hi. COVID. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> well, that has been our podcast. Everybody, this is Pete Lee. Very, very funny. Great guy. Great headliner. He's got a podcast too. Snuggle Storm, right? Snuggle Storm. Um, Instagram will tag everything in it. To, uh, uh, and uh, you can find him. Great guy. Great comic. This was a hoot. This was a hoot nanny. This was a hoot. Chris, is it okay if I give you an IOU today? No, yeah. I'm just kidding. I spent it all on Topo Chico. Anyways, thanks for coming, Pete. I love you, brother. He's and, getting uh, dumb and dumber <laughs> IOUs. That's as good as a car, sir. <laughs> Topo Chico. Topo Chico. 896. Going to want to save that. That's a big one. 
275,000. Dumb and Dumber is the greatest movie ever made. Okay, it's, we're done. It's the best. Banth. 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 Dumb and Dumber. Banth. All right, everybody. You know what time it is. It's that comedy showcase app time. It's on Instagram and Twitter. And it's not, that's not where I was going. What am I saying? <laughs> it's on the app store for apples. And <laughs> it's an app. It's stream stand up. You pay the money. Yeah, you pay money, but the money goes to the comics on the app. That's rare. It's rare. And it's for up and comers. So if you like content and you like supporting rising stars, this app is for you. Ooh, I, sh I should remember what I said right there. Uh, okay, Comedy Showcase app. Thank you so much. I love you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>